It's an FAQ. It's an FAQ. It's an FAQ. We're doing an FAQ today, guys. I'm super excited. Very pumped. This one's highly requested. I'm going to tell you what the FAQ is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 294 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, is an FAQ. And that's cool. And this one, again, uh, highly requested by a lot of people, including a lot of the Sudzers that are in the Discord. And that something is called artificial things in, you know, soap. Well... Not really artificial. Uh, let's let's actually break this down. What are we actually talking about? We're talking about Syndet bars, essentially. So a surfactant or an emulsifier or, you know, a detergent, essentially, in cold process. Now, specifically, I've been asked about SCI, SLSA, and BTMS in cold process. And looking on the interwebs, it's actually very confusing, right? People say a lot of different things. And it's a lot of, you know, kind of silly, like that you can't do it is very strange to me. And so we are going to talk about putting in essentially additional bubblers into soap that are not really what we usually use, like sugar, all that jazz. And the reason we're going to do that is because there's a lot of like conflicting things and it seems to be a weird hot button issue, which we're not gonna talk about the hot button issue because I really don't care what you decide to put into your soaps. If it makes sense for you and your business model or your hobby, do the thing, be awesome. We're not gonna get into the controversy. We are specifically going to talk about whether or not from a scientific perspective, you can put in SLSA, SCI or BTMS into your cold process or hot process soap, why you would want to, and you know what you can expect if you try it. So let's get to the video and we will talk about all of that there. Okay, so a question that I get asked a whole bunch. Oh, look, there it is. See, I told you yesterday you were going to see all of the peachy, you know, soaps and all of their peachy glory. And so there it is. I was right. Anyway, question I get asked a whole bunch is involving putting surfactants into soap. So specifically SCI, SLSA, uh, BTMS, and yeah. So first up, we're not going to get into, you know, whether or not you, you know, you, what that means if you put, you know, any of these surfactants into a soap because you make your own decisions for yourself or your hobby or your business or whatever. And if you are okay with putting in, you know, detergents, then, you know, cool. What we are talking about is what it would do. So before we talk about whether you can do, let's talk about why you would want to do. So surfactants and these, you know, these specifically are uh, essentially bubblers. Uh, they are great in a lot of like shampoo bar formulations in you know, bath bombs and bubble bars, primarily used in those sorts of applications, really. Uh, but why would you want to put it into cold process? Well, one of the biggest benefits on putting in, uh, you know, any of your surfactants, your SLSA, your SCI, or your BTMS would be the bubbling factor. 
because as we know, you know, natural soap, cold process soap can be uh, difficult to lather in like hard water situations, right? But SLSA, SCI, and BTMS are not impacted by hard water. So it would actually increase the bubble of your, of your soap. And let's pretend we haven't already talked about other ways to increase the bubble in your soap because we're just focusing on surfactants. So that makes it, you know, really beneficial. And that's probably the reason why so many people ask me about whether or not they can do this. And honestly, the information on the internet is spotty with this. So I get that it's coming, you know, to me or probably lots of other soap makers as well. So first up, can you do it? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can add it to soap. I think we've, uh, we've shown time and time again on this channel, you know, anything essentially can be added to soap. What is it going to do to the soap? Well, I guess that's where you actually have to really think about this. So, soap is an anionic compound. And SLSA and SCI, both gentle, you know, detergents that help with the bubbling, they are also anionic. And so... Theoretically, you would have none problems whatsoever, including that into the solution and the solution falling out of solution, essentially. So those would theoretically work just on their head. How about BTMS? BTMS is cationic. And so the general rule in chemistry, right, when you're formulating solutions and whatnot, is if you mix, you know, a cationic compound with an anionic compound, it's going to fall out of solution. It's not going to work. That said, I am certain that there are people that have used BTMS in their products. Um, just first blush, looking at just the chemical formulation of BTMS and what we know about soap, I probably personally wouldn't mess with that just because you are increasing the possibility that your soap is not going to, you know, go through saponification. Again, that said, if you're using it in small enough percentages, not so small that it won't make a difference, but not so big that it's really impacting the solution itself, yeah, I mean, I think it could work. I don't know that I ever would. I I also never have, as you can probably tell with, an, with all of this. As far as SLSA and SCI, um, I've really actually also never put either one of those in soap. But theoretically, you could. So, yeah, no, you can uh, put it in soap. I guess the question now becomes how much and what is the process because SCI comes in noodle and or powder form right BTMS is solid SLSA is powder and they like to bubble so what would we do in order to get it into the actual soap knowing that at least SLSA and SEI can be included in cold process or hot process to that how would we actually put it in okay Okay, so assuming they can be added to soap, uh, how would you do it and at what percentage? Uh, well, our standard rule of thumb whenever we are including extra, you know, special bubbler things, like, you know, your, well, your, like, your, oh my goodness, what is that called? The EDTA? Yeah. Or, you know, sodium citrate or sugar, really. The, the general consensus is one to three percent of the total oil weight. So there you go. Between one and 3% um, would be the jumping off part. I know for a fact that you can put all of these in melt and pour because I have done melt and pour tests with them and I've done it all at 3% to increase the bubble of melt and pour. And it super does, it's super effective. So, I would say with cold process, that would be what I would do for SLSA, SCI, and BTMS, 3%.
or between one and three if you're feeling, you know, rather conservative. Now, how do you include it? Well, I see both the SLSA, well, all three of them, really, uh, getting kind of a bubbly, you know, soap batter if you add it, like, into your oils, like, dissolve it into your oils and then put your lye solution in there. And just the, just the nature of the actual stick blender and how that's a very big, you know, vroom vroom. And so it's mixing the soap up really well to hit that emulsion. I would say you're probably going to run into a bubbly soap batter. Is a bubbly soap batter a problem? No, of course it's not. The bubbles can go away. I would probably prefer though with something like this because it's not really necessary for the emulsion process, right? You don't really need it for the emulsion. I would probably reserve a portion of my water, dissolve both in all any of these in water because they don't get super bubbly when you're just mixing them up with like a skewer or whatever and water hits them and then add it like I add, you know, my clays after emulsion has been hit and then stir it in and, you know, go to town. Um... Yeah, uh, for the SCI noodles, uh, you could just n melt those down and just add them directly to your oils. Or again, I would still add it as like a secondary thing, like your colors or your fragrances or your clays or whatever after you've hit an emulsion. Because again, as I said, it's not needed for the actual emulsion process. So yeah, that's a total... It's totally doable. You also have to keep in mind, though, with all of these, yes, they are surfactants. Yes, they are great for bubbles. They're good bubblers. They are also an emulsifier in and of themselves. So if you add it too early, you might end up with really, really thick soap batter, and maybe you don't want that. I mean, to that, if you add it at all, you might end up with really, really thick soap batter, and maybe you don't want that. And for the BTMS... My science brain says that it has the potential to get weird. But that said, I've never actually done it. So I'm actually thinking maybe we should do a test. And I can do this because I've got all those guys. We can see what this all does. So we can do SLSA, SCI, both in noodle form and in powder form, and BTMS. And see, you know, if it does anything different than, you know, whatever standard bar we, we keep. Right? Make sense? I think that could be fun. Yeah, totally. But, you know, to answer the, the question, can you do? Yeah, yeah, you can. Why would you do? Well, because it's great for hard water and it helps with the bubbling. So if you're having problems with your batches and your recipes, then there's another option for bubbling. Um... You know, going to the whole, should you put this in cold process or hot process soap? I don't know. Those are decisions you make on your own. And, you know, you, you do your thing. If, you're, if you don't have any problem putting surfactants or artificial bubblers into your soap, then, yeah, can be done. I, I don't see a problem with that if you don't have a problem with that. We all make our own choices. So... Theoretically, yes, it can be done. I would stick at 3% for all three of them. Remember, SLSA and SCI are both anionic, as is soap, so you shouldn't have any issues with anything falling out of solution, but BTMS might give you problems. But because we're talking about this, and I'm just approaching it from like a, like a science perspective, having not actually done it myself... I think we're going to do a test. Yeah, that'll be fun. I love tests. Tests are the most fun. So, and I have all these things, so it'll be great. So let's uh, plan on doing a test of all of these things, and we'll do a lather test and see how it all works, you know, and then we'll all know together because I don't like just theorizing things. I like testing things. But for now, yeah, theoretically it can be done. That's day 294. All things surfactants. Yeah, so talking with you guys about this right now at this exact moment really makes me want to do this and give you guys like a real 
example of what all this would do. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow's video is going to be this. We are going to be doing some tests of the BTMS, the SCI, and the SLSA in SOAP. And we're going to do lather tests and all of the jazz so we can see what it all does. Uh, but also, I already filmed tomorrow's video. So when that one comes out, it's going to be confusing. It's okay. We'll figure it out. It's going to be great. But yeah, no, uh, as far as putting them in, uh, technically speaking, you can do. There's nothing that says you can't. And um, again, not really getting into the controversy on whether or not you should, because soap is supposed to be handcrafted, or if it's not, you know, natural, whatever that means, then it's a syndet and it's a detergent and it's no better than ivory. First and foremost, that is a ridiculous argument. And you know what? I said I'm not getting into it. Maybe we'll talk about it again tomorrow. But yeah, there's your FAQ for, you know, things surfactant related. Extra bubblers. Yes. If you're interested in seeing the tests, you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the YouTubes will let you know when I post it. So that would be cool. For those of you who have hit the subscribe button, hey, thanks. You're cool. I appreciate you guys. Come back tomorrow. Let's, uh, Let's test these bad boys. And for any of you that have actually used any of these three surfactants in your soap making, hey, let me know what your experiences were. Let's have a chat. That would be excellent. For now, I gotta go, because I gotta go make those soaps for tomorrow so they're ready to, you know, test and do the things. But, you know, thank you for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. As I said, I gotta go, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.